Is this another Vision Pro video? Uh, yes. Yeah, just, it, it's a good one though, I promise. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sure. No, okay, so I've been thinking a lot about what a second generation Vision Pro might look like. But didn't this literally just came out? No, I know, but okay. So obviously there are lots of other VR headsets, but there are lots of things that got way more interesting about this one joining the market. And I, if you compare this to those, this is missing stuff. Right, but that is also the most expensive ones. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, if there are things that the Quest 3 does that if the Vision Pro did it, it would feel like it's a revolutionary change to this thing. It's a good video, I swear. All right, I'll allow it. This doesn't work though, you can't. Okay, fine, anyway. So I don't think the Vision Pro is gonna be an every single year product update like the iPhone. I think it's gonna be one of those that's like every couple of years, you stack up enough tech updates every once in a while and it's worthy of a new generation and then it's a bigger deal when it comes out. And by the way, that's how a lot of other VR headsets have been. The Quest 3 came out like three years after the Quest 2 and the PSVR 2 came out like six years after the first one. So in a sense, this, this is already very early thoughts, but it's been out for a little bit and we're really starting to get a sense of where people are using it and how people are getting the most value out of it. And let me tell you, a lot of people are definitely still not convinced on the whole VR or Vision Pro thing at all. Like it's an interesting product for sure, but it just doesn't do much. And I started having those thoughts immediately as soon as I started testing this thing, just all sorts of missing stuff that I would like it to do. So this is all those things in one place. So probably the biggest thing that you've noticed if you've been familiar with the VR headset world or used any other VR headset before is the Vision Pro is missing shared experiences. Like you are always so alone in this headset. Like meaning there are lots of other great super immersive experiences and you can be productive and you can watch a movie, but no matter what's happening, you're always alone. Even if you have pass through on, nobody else can see what you see. And so it's basically impossible to share what you're experiencing without, you know, mirroring everything on an iPad or something like that. Now, FaceTime is close, it's, it's one thing, but I'm talking about sharing one virtual space with more than one person or seeing the same virtual environment at the same time with multiple people or, or seeing the same virtual object from two different perspectives at the same time. You ever play Rec Room? <laughs> it's, one of the, it's one of the oldest but most fun games on the MetaQuest. It's just so simple. You're just out there having fun, but it's a bunch of people running around a room or an environment to different game areas where they can jump into an experience and play a game together. So in that digital space, you look around and see other people, and I use people with air quotes, but you see them, they see you, and, and you can see the same environment from different angles at the same time and explore it together. It doesn't even have to be super realistic or high resolution or convince you that it's another reality, but it's just way more social and interactive and fun that way. But on Apple Vision Pro, aside from FaceTime really, all of the other experiences, it's just you in there, solo. Like there's nobody else in there. So no matter what you're doing, no matter how immersive the movie is or no matter how good the game is around you, you're in there by yourself and nobody else can see what you're seeing. Like just, here's a basic example. How sick would it be if you and the person next to you on a plane could sync up your experiences and both watch the same movie in a virtual theater at the same time. Simple as that. Or maybe if you were manipulating a 3D object in space, wouldn't it make a ton of sense for someone else to be able to share that object with you so that they can see how you're manipulating it? Like it feels like it just makes too much sense. I told you guys about that Sky Guide app, which has like, you know, you look up and there's all the stars and the constellations and it shows you where they're all supposed to be. It is pretty awesome. Funny enough, there's a laser pointer feature that lets you point a laser pointer at the sky and like circle around and point at things and draw things. But still, nobody can see what you're pointing at with the laser, even if they have a Vision Pro. So there are two basic types of shared experiences that it would just be great for Apple to add to this thing. The first one, is two different people with Vision Pros are in the same room with pass-through on, and one of them drops a virtual object into that room, and the other can see it at the same time. Manipulate the object, they can see it as well. Great. 
The other is two different people with Vision Pros in different places, halfway across the world, doesn't matter. They both turn on or join the same virtual environment and can see it at the same time. As of right now, I believe the first one is harder because the way these headsets work with the pass through basically in real time, they're mapping the volume of space around you with the sensors on the front of it, the surfaces, the walls, the floor, the objects around you and everything. That's how Vision OS is able to lock your apps floating in 3D space and how it's casting shadows onto different surfaces in your room with decent accuracy. But there's no guarantee that if you're in a room with someone else who also has a headset on, that both your headsets are mapping the room in the exact same way. Like maybe I place an object into space, but your headset doesn't see space there, so it's confused or it doesn't map my hands or, or any what I'm manipulating in the exact same way. It's just not exactly guaranteed to be the same. But the other kind, just sharing a virtual environment someone builds with anyone anywhere in the world, seems like a no-brainer. Like being able to watch a movie in a virtual movie theater with someone else who also gets a seat in that movie theater, playing an obvious multiplayer game in the same environment, like this stuff is is pretty basic with VR. I love multiplayer table tennis in the Quest. It's one of my favorite shared VR experiences. You can play against people anywhere else in the world. There's all kinds of other multiplayer games like this in VR. That is a huge part of the VR gaming experience. And I just wonder why this doesn't have that yet. Seems like a huge, huge thing, especially, and I know, you know, Apple has environments that they built in, but and they're massive and high resolution, but you can only move a little bit before you're out of the play zone, if you will. It's it's fascinating. I wonder if that's something to do with the way Apple thinks about these environments. Nevertheless, what I know is that's the number one missing feature on the Vision Pro that I'd love to see in a second gen. Now, the other big one that stands out to me is if I want to use Vision Pro a lot in, let's say, multiple, just two different locations, home and work, I wish that it had a memory of all of the windows and apps that I leave open in each place. See, Vision Pro is actually already amazing at this in one space. It's seriously incredible. Windows stay locked to where you leave them as it live maps its way around your space. So you can pin something to a wall and then walk around and pin something to another wall or just in the middle of the room, leave the room, come back, they're still there. I even tried, ready for this? I pinned a window right here between these two cars in the parking lot. Then I turned and walked away, just left it behind me in the parking lot, walked inside, walked all the way down this long hallway, totally out of sight, around another corner, into the studio, and sure enough, that window is still right there where I left it between those spaces in the parking lot. The only thing holding it back from being nearly perfect is occlusion. Basically, the only thing that ever gets between the window and you is your own arms and hands which is usually totally fine, but if you have something like around a corner, it doesn't put the wall in between you and the window, which is where it should be. So sometimes it gets a little wonky, but overall nine out of 10 already really cool. But the second it gets dinged is when you wanna do this in more than one space. So let's say at home, I've set up all these suite monitors. I've got a virtual TV in one room and a game and some windows all over the walls or whatever, cool. I pack it up, I drive here to the studio and I put it on. And the second I start opening apps here, they have to disappear from home. They basically disappear from any other space and open in your new space. So there is no memory of different older spaces. So when I go back home, my windows are all gonna be gone and I'll have to set them each individually up again. Not a huge deal, but if it had a memory, wouldn't that just make sense? I wonder if you could set up like little beacons. Like all it really probably needs is like a QR code or some visual identifier. But basically you get home, you put the headset on, it sees the beacon and then it goes, oh, I'm at home. And then it puts your windows all the way up where it already knows you usually have them for work. And so you basically just kick back on the couch, put the headset on, and you don't have to reset up each window in all the same places you want it every single time. It just remembers that. That would be sick. Those two features alone, I think would make a dramatic update to how often I realistically would use Vision Pro. Just, I don't know if that requires some Vision OS software update or if you need more compute to do things like more memory of locations or shared computing spaces, but that's, that's the giant things that I think are missing from it that would be awesome. Then the rest of the stuff on my list anyway is maybe a little more icing on the cake. Like here's another one. I think probably 99.99% of people who buy a Vision Pro 
have an iPhone. I think that's pretty safe. It might be 100, but I, I think that's a reasonable assumption. And I, I found it interesting. I think a lot of people assume that it'll just connect to the iPhone, and they think that they'll be able to see their phone notifications straight away on the Vision Pro. But it's not. It's a separate device, like a Mac or an iPad. So yeah, it'll show you iMessage stuff, because that's everywhere. But it is a separate device. But you know, the obvious difference is, unlike a Mac or an iPad, when you put on a headset, well, now you're wearing a headset, so if I were to get a phone call on my iPhone, I couldn't necessarily even see that I'm getting a phone call. There is no notification for it in the Vision Pro, and I, I'm gonna have to take the headset off to even see it coming and accept that phone call. So it would be nice to have an option where these two things talk to each other a little better. Just a little, maybe a little hub for just my smartphone's notifications over to the side if I wanna check them. I think it makes sense. They probably won't do that though. But here's a number for you. 3,386. That is the pixel density of the Vision Pro's displays. It's kind of a ridiculous number. Over 3,000 pixels per inch each. So there's been some teardowns. I'll link some below the like buttons. You can see them up close. They're incredibly sharp. So that and the high refresh rate and minimal distortion all contribute to a pass through and just everything feeling so real. But the number I'd actually like to improve is 92. So the uh, the Vision Pro's displays show 92% of the DCI P3 color gamut. Pretty good coverage, like for a display that's honestly pretty good. The reference grade display that is like the Pro Display XDR, for example, that'll show you 99% of DCI P3. So again, it's, it's for a display a pretty great number, but the thing about a VR headset is it's it's replacing your eyes. Like it, it, the pass-through is pretty good for what it is, but without getting too complicated, 100% coverage of DCI P3 is about 50% coverage of all of the colors that the human eye can see. So this headset looks great and it's very sharp, but it's only showing me a little less than half of the colors of reality. So I wonder how much they can improve that because the human eye is obviously insane. It has crazy dynamic range and foveated rendering and great sharpness and all that fun stuff. But you know, Apple's been really good at a lot of displays for a long time and these are some incredible displays. So field of view, wider please. But also, yeah, just generally more color would be interesting. There's lots of other little things that are obvious like weight reduction, please, of course. Um, Higher quality screen recording is a niche little request of mine, but I think would help a lot for people trying to make videos with these things. Uh, also, even more specific, keyboard pass-through while in an environment. So you're in an environment, you're typing, you've got your virtual Mac display, and if it can see and recognize my hands after a scan, I think it would be nice if you could also build in a feature to scan your keyboard or recognize the keyboard of your MacBook just because it's gonna look the same every time, kind of like my hands. All that being said, I'm sure there are more things that are people you know, thinking about on their lists, but let me know what you think about Apple Vision Pro Gen 2. Maybe leave your wish list in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.